Hey there, Mac Automator. This is Picard Shivano with Mac Automation Tips. I'm finally back with another video about MIM, MIM 2.0, and I'm really excited to talk about the changes and the upgrades that have been made to this application. So if you're interested, stick around and check it out. So yes, I've been using MIM for since about 2000, 2023. And uh, I've seen significant changes over the app. And I was actually, I think I was using the app even before the AI was introduced. And so now the, um, you know, MIM was, MIM 2.0 was kind of in beta, alpha and beta for almost a year, I think. And uh, they have released it a uh, full version. And I want to show you some of the reasons why I still use it. And I have tried to abandon it a couple of times, to be honest, but why I still use it. So let's check it out. So to be honest with you, I asked Mim to create the outline for this video production. And so um, that makes it really nice. That's one of the things that I use Mim a lot for is to create create outlines, to draft blog posts, um, to create agendas for meetings. It, it does a lot. And one of the things about you know, MIM is, it's, it's, it's similar to ChatGPT, but what it does is it bases your, you know, it's generations based upon your content, what's in your library. So it's a much more personal AI than ChatGPT. And so again, I probably have about, I don't know, 5,000 or so uh, notes in here going way back before the introduction, I think, of the AI. And um, I've been using it because it's simple to, you know, start a new note and just put it in there. And you really don't have to get into dealing with folders or, you know, that you really pretty much you just tag your notes like you see here's a, here's a tag or what they call categories. And so you categorize it there and then you can look it up based upon categories. You know, I can, um, I can double, let me see, right click on that and then I can see some of the other uh, notes in that category and then I can open it up in a split and see all those. So, um, basically that's, you know, the reason why I've been always using MIMS is because it's just the ease of use. Even though I've used a number of note, uh, apps over the years, I found that MIM works best for me. Um, one of the things they did finally is they came with the dark mode. So here's your dark mode. That's what it looks like here. I thought I would use dark mode, but, um, not really using it. So they have, you know, I, I kind of keep that off. And then they also have, um, you know, some integrations with Zapier and you can also email, um, you know, you can, yeah, you can send emails to your MIM and, and, and it will, um, you know, uh, it will, it will kind of pretty much outline your emails. I want to show you what that outline looks like in a minute. And so then you had your settings and stuff like that. And so it also has templates as well. I think you could do a little bit better job on the templates, but uh, it still has the templates in there as well. And then, it, then also one more thing it has is a, um, a Google extension, which I'm going to show you, which really has, kind of gives MIM a little bit of an edge over other notebook applications. So I'm going to show you that in a minute there. So let's go back. I'm going to turn it back on to turn off here, dark mode. So basically, this is what you have here. Now, they added what's called TAD. Tabs and tabs are, are, I think, are really great because you can skip back and forth between open uh, notes. This side over here is called Heads Up, and this this is permanent. It used to be you can close this and I think the they used to call it co-pilot I think and basically what this does is your current you know when you have your current note open what it'll do is it'll look for other notes that are similar to the current note so you see here you see these and I can I can ask it to find more as well so it'll it'll look for other notes that are similar to this note and so that kind of resurfacing is kind of helpful particularly when you know you're you know, you just kind of, you, you can always use search, but when you just kind of have a note open and you're kind of just curious about other notes that are similar to it, it'll put there for you. So you can kind of pick the all there and see other kind of notes that are similar to this one, right? So that's really convenient and you can kind of update it using the update button, that kind of thing. And uh, you can regenerate the, the from scratch. And so you have that as the head, it's called heads up. 
now. And that is um, that feature kind of made Mem unique when it first came out, too. Um, so that, you know, you can kind of, again, you know, just kind of finding um, similar notes. Um, and that's something that I don't think any other application, note application has. Um, not that I know of, but maybe, maybe so. Um, and then what you do here too is you have what's called the mem chat. And mem chat is, is pretty much like, um, any other AI chat is that you can prompt it to, you can prompt it to, to pretty much, um, you know, based on the current note, you can do that or you can get rid of this and have a prompt and it will look through your entire uh, library. So one of the things is that what's really great about Mem is it it can create content and generate content based upon your entire library as opposed to just the current note. Like I use Craft uh, Notebook as well, and I use it for other, for other reasons. But Craft you can only uh, have the AI work on the current note that's open. So this one here, this is one reason why I keep using it because. I can keep daily notes inside of Mem and then ask it to, you know, like, like literally come in, summarize my week or so, tell me some similar things that I should be uh, focusing on, um, you know, in the next two weeks or what have you. And then if you, if you go into the chat right here and start a new chat, you'll see here, um, what should I follow up on from this week? Uh, give me an overview of my last 14 days. Those are just the types of example questions that you can ask. Um, you know, in order to to really make this chat very useful and very personal. So it has that. And then another thing it has is called voice mode. And the voice mode, basically what the voice mode does is that you can talk into it and it would transcribe what you say, but it would also give it a kind of an outline looking like this. So it, it gives you an outline of what you say. It's not just trying to give you paragraphs. And quite frankly, I've found that I prefer these kind of outlines as opposed to paragraphs because most of the time when I'm in a notebook, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like reviewing what a, a, a topic or an issue, um, or an idea or, or what have you. And I really want to read it in outline mode, not in paragraphs. Um, and so this is, this is what that does. You can dictate to it and then it'll outline it like that. And so that's, that's another strong feature in it. Um, and then two is that they have a thing called cleanup and basically cleanup will take any note and that does not have an outline format and put it into outline. So let me take one of my, my old notes here, uh, building long uh, term memory. So let me go in here and let me see if I can do a cleanup here. OK, and we'll watch this. And if it takes too long, I'll fast forward. All right. So you see there. So it, it tells you what it changed. Right. You can do that. And then you can either refine it or you can accept it. Most of the time I just accept it because it's pretty accurate. So you go here and you see how it pretty much and it was already an outline a little bit already, but but it just created more of an outline. And um, and sometimes if it does not have a uh, category already um, assigned to it, it will do that as well. So that's the same thing it does when you do kind of the, the voice dictation. It gives you a, a nice little outline. Now, another thing that it does is you have a Chrome extension here. And let's see if I can open this up. This is one of my videos here. And, and it, it will actually do an outline of a video. So let's go do the Chrome extension. And it goes over here. Now, I have to admit, this takes a little bit of time. Um, and I'm not sure. I haven't tested it yet. Tested it yet. Oops, I got to bring it back here. Because if it pops away, what you do is you want to go back in here. And once you start, you know, you click in here, it will, um, it should, let me see, I can say create. Okay, it does it on and on. So it's, it's thinking right here. Now, this thinking process, again, can take, you know, well over a minute, right? But basically what it's doing is that it is listening to, quote unquote, listening to the video and, and then it's going to give uh, an outline of the video. So that is actually, that's, that's a, that's an app. You know, that mean this on sale, that, that kind of app or video summarizing app is things you kind of find on, um, you know, the, in the app store, right? But this is built right into MIM. So you see that it has it there. And then when we open it up, it goes over here. 
And then you see that right there, it outlines it there. And, and it's not, I would say that the outline for here is mainly using my description, the chapters, and then the resources. Now on the, but when we go to a article, it does a much better job with articles. Okay. So, but, but it, you know, again, uh, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't think that it's, that it's listening, um, to the video as much as, um, other app, similar apps do because I have, I have actually I have a, a video summary um, app that does a much better job and it actually goes through and gives um, all kind of details about what the video is about. So anyway, I've, I've only used this one or two times and now seeing that it's probably not um, as robust as some of the other apps there. Um, but anyway, so that's but that's that's how that works. And I don't know, if I don't have an article. I would put up an article and show you that one. But basically, it does the same thing for the article. And then also, just want to point out too that you can pin um, pin article uh, uh, pin notes like I do over here. And then you can also find um, find in note. You can do a search inside of notes, and you can do you can copy a link to a note. The only thing that I don't like about this is that that if you send a link to someone, they have to sign into their mem account in order to uh, see the note. I would like to be able to publish it um, and be able to have, you know, people be able to see it um, without having to, you know, um, open an account for mem or, or sign in. So that's one of the things I don't like there. And then it also has um, view version history, which is another thing that might be um, useful um, you can go back and see, you know, if you want to recover some stuff that you wrote and do that. So it works that way as well. And let's see. Um, other, other than that, I mean, I think it's, it's for the most part a good, um, upgrade. Um, I think we can expect more from this over time. Um, I think there's some things that, you know, like I would like to see. Uh, so maybe some collaboration um, in there. I would like to be able to, to have this hidden so you can be able to toggle it and, um, and the other one just sit here all the time, which I think is kind of, yeah, it kind of gets in the way sometimes. Um, but I think, I think over the years, we will see some, some, some even better things coming to it. I think the desktop feature needs, um, you know, a better shortcuts or even more shortcuts. I don't think it only has a few. It needs shortcuts and things of that sort. Um, but so I'm looking forward to, to, you know, to seeing the growth of MIM. And I know there's a lot of AI apps out there to choose from. And there's a lot of competition. Uh, right now, the MIM app is, um, it's like $12 a month. So they upped the price in there. So it's like about $140, some $44 a year, right? So that's, that's pretty steep, but that's pretty much kind of where a lot of these apps are going. But now they also provide a free version, which is 25 notes per month and 25 uh, chat messages. And I'm curious to see if, you know, if I could get away with that. I'm, you know, I, I know that I use it a lot, but wow, I mean, I might be able to get away with 25, 25. I'll check and see. And all the reasons is because I have several apps that I'm subscribed to. So anytime I can find a way to cut back, I definitely do that. But I uh, encourage you to check a look at MIM. You do get a, a free trial to try it out. And um, I think you might like it because it's very simple, very direct, very clean. And you don't have to jump through a lot of different um, UI features in order to get your notes um, in you know, in, in, in your library. So definitely check it out. Let me know what you think about MIM. And if you have any questions, put them in the chat below. And um, if this is your first time to my channel. Definitely please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.